everyone, I am Morgan Brown and I'm gonna be working with Artemis Sportswoman to bring you guys all a series of how to follow along, draw and paint your favorite fish species to catch. So if you guys don't know what Artemis Sportswoman is, it's an organization that's all about building a dynamic, impassioned community of women hunters and anglers that are going to advocate for conservation. They're actually a really awesome initiative of the National Wildlife Federation. So if you guys want to check out more details about them, of course, check out their social media, but also go to their website at artemis.nwf.org. So now let's just kick off and get started with our first species, the brown trout. I will be using a cardstock for my drawing paper and then I have a scratch piece of regular paper for when I add color. You can see everything I'll be using here. Just a regular pencil I have laying around, an eraser, micron pens, but you can use Sharpie or any other pens as well. Water, some old paint brushes, and then a travel watercolor kit. So I'm gonna start with the very front of the fish and the top nose area by drawing a little backward C type shape to begin with. I will then draw a long arc across the paper that will be the back of the fish. You can see it, I have a little arc that is a little bit more pronounced on the left side to give a slight hump behind the head of a brown trout. I'm making this, I'm not making this perfect because I'm gonna go back in with pen and erase all the pencil lines. So it's okay if it's a little bit messy for you guys. I left a couple inches on the right side of the paper for space for the tail fin. And I'm just kind of going back in to make sure that I like the shape that I created. So I'm gonna look at the entire length that I did and at about halfway through is where I'm going to start my dorsal fin. I'm gonna create a little triangle and then have the serrated edges as I'm going back down to the back of the trout. I'm now going to work on the head again and draw out that upper jaw. I'm going to extend the line downward and extend it pretty far and that's because on a brown trout the upper jaw actually extends past where the eye is so you want to make sure that you have plenty of room for that eye to go and then at the top of where I draw that jaw I'm going to go back in and add a little bit of detail to where kind of create that shape again on top of that because you're going to leave that white for the brown trout. I am now going to work on the lower jaw. I will go about to the end of the upper jaw and then go back towards the face a little bit and then begin that line there. I'm going to arc that upwards and then I'm going to create a little kind of bump which is a kite which is kind of a male characteristic during mating season that brown trout can develop and I'm, then I'm going to bring that jawline back down and around and in that line where I ended the upper jaw as well. Now I'm going to draw the front gill cover. For this, I'm going to start at the tip of the upper jaw and then draw kind of a jagged J shape. This will go kind of up towards where that hump starts on the back of the fish. And then I'm going to go to that lower jaw and where I ended that, I'm going to bring that up to where it almost connects to the bottom of that gill cover I just drew. Next, I'm going to draw the top gill cover. For this, I'm going to go right above the top of like that J shape for the first gill cover. And then I'm going to extend that line out to the right, kind of in a straight line. Just not going super far, and then I'm going to bring that back down and kind of stop that right above where the J shape on that first gold cover would end, and then loop that back down to where all three of those lines kind of converge. Now I'm going to draw that kind of serrated area that you see on the bottom of the gills, and I'm just going to draw lots of little lines, continuing to taper that in to where it creates that curved shape the entire way through. Now I'm gonna draw the eye, and so for the eye, remember that the eye doesn't go past the end of that jaw, so you're gonna to wanna to draw a circle first, and then on the inside of that, you're gonna to want to draw a teardrop shape where the tip of the teardrop is pointing towards the left and front of the fish. I'm then gonna just draw some little lines around the edge of that and kind of a curved line and some other little half circles around the edge of the eye to give it some more 
detail. So I'm now going to continue with the belly and fin area of the fish. And so for this, I'm going to just draw a slight little line extending out of the bottom. And that'll be where you can kind of see the front of the belly before you see that first pectoral fin. I'm going to start the pectoral fin right where that back gill cover comes in and then create an elongated triangle shape that will extend down past the belly. I will also have that other fin peeking out as well. Then I'm going to continue the belly back starting just below that top corner of the pectoral fin with a slight upward curve until you hit that very back edge of the dorsal fin. There I'm going to kind of create a kink upwards in the belly and then have that go back until it's even with that back line. Now when you go straight down from the middle of that dorsal fin is where you are going to create the pelvic fin. The pelvic fin will also be a triangle and about that same size as those front pectoral fins. And I'm once again going to have that other one peeking out. Now I'm going to move on to drawing the tail. So the brown trout tail is where it goes into the tail states thick and stocky rather than tapering and getting really skinny like you see in some other species. You'll want to create two arches that mirror each other for the tail and having the top go a little or above where you have drawn the top of the dorsal fin. Brown trout tails are square and maybe even with a very slight V, but don't make it very v -ed. And then just drawing a little curve to show where the rays will come in. Next, I'm going to draw the anal fin, which is gonna start where I created that kink in the belly and that fin's gonna be much larger than all the other fins that you've drawn. Now I'm going to sketch out the lateral line down the trout, starting about halfway down that back gill cover and continuing down to the middle of the tail. This is going to be important because the spots, which we're going to do next, are mostly above the lateral line on a brown trout. Brown trout have spotting on their face, which is often smaller. Brown trout spots are often black to brown, and they can also have red or yellow spots as well. The spots on the face are often from the eye back and typically along the gill covers as well. Their spots are not perfectly round and they're often more boxy and uneven and they greatly vary in size. I'll move from the front of the fish back along all the way until I get to the tail and but just making sure that we stay above the lateral line for the most part. Brown trout have many different patterns in spotting across the variations and depending on where you find them around the country. So you can really have fun with this and just kind of put spots however you want to see them. I'm going to go and add the spots all the way along to the back, just making sure that I vary in size, having those bigger spots and making sure that they're not circle. I'm just adding them very quickly drawing them until I get to that tail line and making sure I don't go on the tail. I'm then going to go back in and below that lateral line, just add a couple, but making sure that those ones are normally smaller. And a lot of those will actually be kind of those red to yellow spots that we talked about as well. I'm going to add some loose lines around those bigger spots there to indicate the halo effect that can often happen around brown trout spots because brown trout will have their spots and then a slight halo of a lighter color, which is often a silvery color around it. I quickly just added a line around the very bottom of where all the spots ended because there's often a color change there that I'm going to think for later. Brown trout tails either don't have spots at all or they have very few spots. I'm adding just a couple right along the top. So next I'm actually going to add that adipose fin that we hadn't added yet just a cute little like J shape and then put spots on that because the adipose fin almost always has spots. On the dorsal fin, I'm going to draw some lines and then have light spotting that follows those lines up, just quickly adding those in there in that lined pattern. Now I'm just going to go back through and add some detail along the fins. I'm going to just go through and add those rays to the tail and all of the other fins as well. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to go through and just add a couple more little details like a line underneath of on the belly because I know that there's often a color change there to where they fade to a lighter color as they go down. 
as well as on that bottom jaw, at the top of the bottom jaw, there's often an area that is white there. So I'm just going to add a little line to indicate that that is white there. And just going in and adding little lines and creases that you can see on a trout. And so when you're looking at that, then you have a basic outline of a brown trout and you've got a great start. And honestly, you could probably in there if you wanted to. I, however, I'm going to go back in with my micro on pen and go over everything. I'm going to do this because I am going to add watercolor and so I want the lines to stay really prominent. I'm going to color in the teardrop part of the eye and then go around the other lines around the eye that we created. I apologize because my hair is going to get in the way for a couple of seconds because I forgot the camera was there. <laughs> but then I'm going to follow that first line along the back that we drew and just really make sure and go over and outline. With that line, I'm going to extend a little bit into the dorsal fin, but not go all the way across. I'm then gonna draw that dorsal fin and make sure I give that jagged edge on the back and then continue that line, leaving a space uh, in between that line on the dorsal fin and doing that exact same thing for the adipose fin. I just wanna do that to make it look like it is coming in and all joining together. With the jaw, I'm actually going to extend it a little bit and give it a little bit of a drop down. And that's just because I wanted it to have that look. And so just remember that the pencil lines were really a guide for you to get started, especially if you want to turn it into an ink drawing. So if you're not going over everything perfectly, that's okay. Your ink drawing doesn't have to be exactly what your pencil was. Those are guidelines to make sure that you are able to move forward and create it the way that you want it to. So I'm just going over all of the lines, making sure that I try to keep the same kind of pressure that way the lines are even as I go through. For the bottom jaw, I am also kind of making that kipe a little bit more extreme and have, have it upturned a little bit more just to make it more prominent because I like the look of a slight kipe. And the same with as you did with the dorsal fins, give the other fins the jagged edge on the end as well, just to create a little bit more interesting factors to your lines as you're drawing. And I'm gonna do that with the pectoral fins and the pelvic fins. And with those as well, you'll see that I'm not going to fully connect that belly line in the same way that I did with those upper fins to make sure they all look like they go together. However, with the anal fin, I am going to continue that belly line all the way through and not have it leave an opening where the anal fin connects just because I think that line is often a little bit more extreme and that's how I like to draw my fish. And of course, with all of the fins, I'm going in and I'm adding the rays to them to give them some texture that you'll see throughout the watercolor as well. With the tail, I'm going to give the tail a little bit more characteristics since I gave it a little bit of a slight kipe, which is associated with the mating season. I'm going to make the tail look a little bit beat up. And so I'm going to kind of create those V shapes cut out of the tail like they might have been beat up. And then I'm going to follow that curved line that we did and make sure that I don't extend the rays past that. And make sure that's a tapered shape and just continue those rays going out. For the rays on the tail, I am actually kind of creating little triangle shapes. I like this just because the rays on the tail can be much more pronounced than they are on the other fins, so I think this gives it a very nice visual look when you're drawing it. And then I'm going through and I'm adding a little kind of a dotted line to really pronounce where the rays enter into the tail. And now I'm just going back through along that bottom belly area where I know that I said there was going to be that color change and just giving a little jagged light line. For the spots, I am going to just kind of quickly color them in. I... I'm not gonna worry about making them perfect. It's just really quickly drawing the dots. There's a lot of white space in some of the dots. 
and then on the face I'm coloring a lot of them in but I'm also doing some of them with just the outline of the circle since some of those spots are red and just doing the outside of the circle when I go back in and add color those spots can be fully red then And you're just going to want to continue to go back with the spots along the body, making sure that you are defining them. And I definitely didn't do all the spots perfectly as I was drawing them out with the pencil. So as I'm going in and filling them in, I'm actually adding a couple more spots that weren't there before, just in areas that I thought looked sparse and I wanted to make look a little bit more full. I'm making sure that I am varying the sizes of the spots that I am doing since that is how the spots are on a brown trout. You also just want to once again make sure that you're staying above that lateral line mostly if you're adding new spots since that is the typical coloration of a brown trout is going to have these spots above the, on or above the lateral line. The spots that I'm doing below the lateral line, a lot of them I'm just kind of doing a quick outline and not coloring them in a lot because the spots that drop below the lateral line on this fish, I want to make a little bit more red. So I'm leaving those open. That way the red will shine through more when I do add color to this. Then I am gonna go back through again and follow along the bottom end of the spots just to create that jagged edge because I know when I put color in this, I am gonna have that be a color change there from where you kind of see the silvery color go down into the golden color. I am of course gonna go back through and add those lines that we did around the bigger spots to represent that halo color that they do have around their spots. And now, as you can see, it's kind of pulling together and you're having a great little pin brown child drawing. I'm now going to take my eraser and just erase it really well, get rid of all the pen. That way it's just a really clean look. A lot of times I'll stop and just keep a pen drawing. You can add more detail and shading in by doing just pen lines and creating it that way. But I am going to now go on and add color with watercolor. So the watercolor I'm using is just a cheap one that I got as a gift years and years and years ago and it's just a travel one and so really just use anything that you need for color whether it's watercolor whether it's colored pencil or even crayon just have fun with it and add some color that way you can see what the brown trout looks like so brown trout typically have a golden to golden brown body and they can have a silvery look as well especially during the summer and that can often be around that lateral line so I'm just mixing up a golden yellow color and I'm going to put that around most of the fish actually. I'm going to leave certain areas white, like I'm going to leave a little white spot on that front gill cover because brown trout can have blue there and so I want to be able to add a more vivid blue there. I'm also going to leave that little line we drew above the top jaw, I'm going to leave that white as well on that bottom jaw, that line we did, I'm going to leave that white as well as the very bottom of the belly of the fish, I'm going to choose to leave white. That way that can be kind of a faded look that some brown trout have. So the fins on brown trout are also going to be a yellow brownish color. And so I'm going to go through and add the yellow to that as well that I'm going to build color up on top of later on to kind of make those more defined. But I'm just continuing to go back into that watercolor as I'm going and just continuing to add color. I'm not being super careful with this because I like a little bit of a looser look when I do watercolor. And so I'm just kind of letting this be and where the watercolor falls it's where it falls. I'm 
I'm then going to go back in and going to make certain parts darker with the golden color, especially on the face and then underneath where the spots end on the body, I'm going to make darker as well to really make that golden color vivid. I'm going to do that along the tail as well because I want that tail to be a little bit darker compared to the rest of the body as well as the parts of the fin that are closest to the body and then having that fade out as it gets towards the tip of the fins. I'm now going to grab a little bit of green and brown to go over the back of the fish. With brown trout, the top of the fish is often a darker brown color for camouflage. And so I'm going to bring that along and start kind of at the nose area and bring that all the way along the back of the fish and fade that down into the spots. Once again, sorry about my hair. I'm gonna start on the face a little bit more green, and then I'm gonna add a little bit more brown as I get into the body. I'm gonna have it start a little bit higher on the face, and then once I get behind the gill cover, I'll have it drop down slightly. And I'm just gonna add that along the back and then have that kind of go up into that dorsal fin. I'm also going to add that color along the edge of the tail fin. Continuing just adding a little bit more brown as I go to darken that color. On the tail, I'm also going to add some streaks of brown just to give it a little bit more definition. Then I'm going to move on to the other fins. The fins on a brown trout are going to be completely colored and they're not going to have any white markings like you might see on a brook trout. For the face, I'm going to make sure that I add a little bit of that color to that kipe as well just to give some definition and move that color around the fish. I'm going to then just rinse my brush in water to make it a lighter shade and add just a little bit of a line to the very bottom of the fish just to make there be a shadowed area on the belly. Now I'm going to add like an ambery color for the eye just to give it a little bit more of a standout and have it be that natural amber color that brown trout eyes typically are. Next I'm going to be grabbing blue because like I mentioned before brown trout can have blue on their gill plates and so that's where I left their a white spot so you can see that. I'm also going to use the blue to continue back over where I had painted yellow already to kind of represent that silvery patch that they can get along their midsection. And this here will also represent kind of that haloed look that they can get around their spots. The next thing I'm going to do is grab some red because like we've talked about before, brown trout can have red spots as well. The painting is still wet, so as I'm going in and dropping just little red dots, it's actually spreading, which is a really cool part of watercolor, is like watching those colors seep together. With the red, I'm going through, especially on the face, and putting it on where I had drawn spots, but then also putting red spots in just their own places. On the body, most of the red spots I'm gonna be are gonna be on or below that lateral line on those smaller ones that I drew because those upper spots are often going to be the darker brown color and as you move down and this spots fade away is where you're going to find those red spots. I'm also going to add just a little bit of the color red to the tip of the adipose fin to give a little vibrancy. Now I'm just going to move around with the red and brown and just continue to add color to the fish and give it some more characteristics, deepen browns and colors 
until I get it to the point that I like it. Because right now all the colors are pretty light and so I'm wanting to add that brown in to make the fins stand out more and the tail as well as giving the back a little bit deeper of a color. But as you can see, this chart was almost done. You can kind of see those basic colors that you often find on a brown trout. Brown trout do come in a ton of different color variations. So look up fish that you've caught, look up pictures of brown trout and just find a cool color variation that you want to see and then give it a try. If you guys do decide to give drawing out a brown trout a try, make sure you tag Artemis Sports Woman. That way they can see and even repost it. And we'll also just remember that you can learn more about Artemis at artemis.nwf.org. Thank you all for following along and I hope you guys give it a try and be sure to let us see it.